Welcome to the exciting a new podcast. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. I'm Dana. And I'm Connor. What are we talking about this week, Andy? Oh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. That's right. Beverly Hills Cop. Rated R. Running time, one hour, 45 minutes. Released December 5th, 1984. So kind of a Christmas movie, right? <laughs> yes, very well, much. I mean, it's in the, it was probably in the theaters <laughs> mm-hmm. for that Christmas time, you know. This Dire- is a family movie. You take the family to see this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Directed by Martin Brest. B-R-E-S-T. Martin Brest. Do you know anything he's done? Don't know that name even a little bit. Meet yeah. Joe Black. Meet Joe Black really? is in there, yes. He's and in it's in his top four. That, or... He directed it, yes. Oh, wow, okay. Along with Beverly Hills Cop, which is in there, and uh, Midnight Run. Oh, wow, really? Midnight and Run. Hoo-ha! Scent of a Woman. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> they got some good movies there. I'm surprised yeah. I don't know his name. Yeah, and he didn't want to do this movie. Uh, it took a little uh, convincing to get him to uh, direct this movie. Did <clears> I see like Spielberg's name attached to this or something like that early on, or... I thought I saw something about Spielberg's name in this. I might be thinking of something else. I'm not sure. I don't recall seeing anything with Spielberg, but it's possible. Um, I know I saw someone else's name attached, but I'll let you tell that because I'm (laughs) sure you have that. Because I was like, get the hell out of here. I had to read the article about it. Are you talking about uh, to play Axel Foley? Yes. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Because it was Axel Copretti. And I was like, I know that name from something else. (laughs) Really? Was it Marion Copretti? Well, in that movie, I think it I was. Think it's yes. Saying, yeah. yes. Huh. Okay. Um, so first, we'll talk about the IMDb description. A freewheeling Detroit cop pursuing a murder investigation finds himself dealing with the very different culture of Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> <laughs> Do they only have one zip? Is that... The, you live in Beverly I just, Hills, you I got added 90210. the 90210 part there, so no, that wasn't did, part like, of the description, but um, I'm not sure if they have multiple... I mean, uh, they might, but... I mean, New York's they do, got 100 you're... zips and stuff like that. I mean, so. are you really Beverly Hills if you're not 90210? No, then you're like, no. no, we're even more exclusive. They don't know. It's yeah. 90211. Oh, that sounds not even... You're like, mm, you might as well be Reseda or whatever. I don't even know if that's close to Beverly Hills. I got a few taglines. The first one, the heat is on. Mm, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. This next one. He's been chased, thrown through a window, and arrested. Eddie Murphy is a Detroit cop on vacation in Beverly Hills. So okay. that's just too... I like the first that was one boring, better. Yeah. yeah, he is on. It's a good one. Um, we'll get right into our cast. Um, Eddie Murphy playing Axel Foley. It is our first Eddie Murphy movie. It's oh. not even our second Eddie Murphy movie. We've done Trading Places, and we did 48 oh, yeah. Hours. Jesus. I was like, yeah, you're right, Jason. <laughs> well, you, you I was were on for places because yeah, Paul was on places. for I was, Paul was saying, on I was for, setting him up to see if he would say that because we talked about I it I just earlier. agreed with you. I was like, yep. <laughs> Paul was on for trading places and I don't know if anybody was I don't know on if for 48 hours. On, maybe Zach might have been. Uh, possibly. That's possible, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you really don't want to have to play Nutty Professor, Beverly Hills Cop, Dream Girls, and Coming to America are his top four. Okay. No Shrek. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so many of them. That's been his, like, second life kind of... Or even the, um... What's that one? Uh, the nut- did you say the Nutty Professor? Nutty Professor. I said, what was that other one? Clumps. The Clumps. They weren't. That wasn't the Nutty. Yeah, the Clumps. Oh, that was like the sequel. Like meet to that. the Clumps the sequel? and was stuff. Was that the sequel to uh, Nutty Professor? I thought it was all one. You know, whatever. I don't know. They were all the same. Up next was uh, playing Detective Billy Rosewood. Not our first time seeing this guy either. Judge Reinhold. Mm. What did we see him in? Fast Times. There you go. Yeah, good one. <laughs> Is you, that it? you were on for Fast Times, weren't I you? Was, yes, I was. Nice. Oh, were you really? Oh, mm-hmm. okay, that's nice. Was I? I don't remember. I don't that was remember uh, that was eighty two. Right? So I don't think not. you were no, here. No, yeah. I wasn't. No, Brian okay. was probably still sitting. Yeah, here. it was Brian because we talked about Phoebe Cates. Oh, of oh, course. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we still talk about Phoebe Cates. And aren't we all? Um, yeah. So his he had Beverly Hills Cop, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Beverly Hills Cop Two, and then the Santa Claus. That's the yeah. Tim Allen uh, Santa Claus mm. movies. He was in Ruthless movies. People. That was a great movie with, uh, I mean, Bette Midler, but it was such a funny movie. Danny yeah. DeVito, too. Danny DeVito. Like, he directed it, I think. Hires. She gets kidnapped, and Danny DeVito just doesn't care. He's not. Because <laughs> Judge Reinhold, I think Helen Slater, I think. I could huh. be very wrong. I, I never saw that. Kidnapped Bette Midler. Okay. And Danny DeVito gets the ransom note, and he's like, I don't remember if Helen Slater and, and he's it, like, she and might he's have like, been. And yeah. he's like, nope, I'm not paying it. I don't care. And so now they're trying to get the money from him other ways, and she's like trying to help them mm. get the money from him. It, it was a very funny movie. Huh. It was in that 
that Danny DeVito sweet spot there where yeah. he's like doing a yep. lot of good comedies. Uh, playing Sergeant Taggart was John Ashton, not John Aston. Mm-hmm. Or John Amos. Yeah. I, John I Ashton. <laughs> tough, close, but not. Um, oh, not I. You want to try anything that he's been in? Have you seen him in anything else? I didn't Cop recognize too. him. I know he wasn't in Beverly Hills Beverly Cop Beverly Hills 3. Cop made it into there, yeah, but he, no, he, no other Beverly Hills Cop he, in his He top. wasn't in part three. I, There's I don't a know. part three? Yeah. Holy with, shit. Uh, <laughs> Four. Yeah, four's coming out, but there's a surprise for but you. No, too. there's a Netflix show coming out. Uh, I have that here yeah, for you. Yeah, I oh, saw it's it on show? the. It's a show. Yeah. Yes, oh it's no. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, it is. I saw it a few months ago in the coming soon part of like whatever. It's just called Foley, I think. Right. Why it's is called, it a show? It's going to be called <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Axel F. And it's starring Kevin Bacon, Joseph That's Gordon-Levitt, right. Eddie Murphy, Judge Reinhold, Bronson Pinchot, Paul Reiser, and John Ashton. Wow. Nice. Wow. Okay. So they're all coming back for it. Jesus I watched Christ. the trailer. It I, just looked like something. Oh, it had it a like trailer a, out already? On Netflix. Okay. It had one. It was like a quick minute. I saw it, but it didn't have a trailer yet when I saw it. It was just like a picture. I'll watch it, but I mean... Yeah. I hope it's funny. Oh, at least. It's a show. You I never know. I didn't know it was a show. <laughs> I think it's a show. Maybe I'm wrong. You know what? When I saw it, it wasn't a trailer. It was, you know how when you have it on pause for a long time? And it just starts yeah, going. Yeah, I saw something there. I think that's where I saw it. One of my new favorite sites to go to now is fanedit.com, where you can watch like the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, where mm-hmm. someone's taken all six hours of that and, and oh. made it into like an hour and 45 oh minute God. good movie. Yeah. yeah. There's a ton of stuff. It's crazy how many... Wow. Fan editor out There's there. There's a lot of sites that'll tell you, like, um, throughout a series, which, like, how many minutes of screen time each character gets. Okay, sure. So you look at something like, um, I don't know, uh, one of the Marvel movies, and someone who's really big, like, um, we'll just say um, Bucky. Okay. He had a whole Winter Soldier movie, and he was in it for, like... 15 minutes. Yeah, he's been in a total like yeah. an hour and a half of yeah. like seven movies. Yeah. Like, I don't geez. think it's a, um, a series because it, it doesn't say one episode. Okay. Like it just says them, it just okay. says okay. the so. I'll right. watch it. I'll watch it then. <laughs> <So> good. <laughs> I was really You're out right. at show. I'm like, no, I'm not giving you eight hours. I'll give you two at the yeah, most. I know, I know. Make it an hour and 45 minutes like this movie because this movie was tight. There was no fat in this movie. <clears throat> hour 45, yeah. Yeah. Um... So you did John Ash? Did you yeah, do so his- you got Beverly Hills Cup. You missed Gone Baby Gone he was in. Is that the Ben Affleck one? I never no, saw that's, that. that's Gone, Gone Girl. Girl. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, Midnight Run. Oh, okay. And Some Kind of Wonderful. Mm, okay. Oh, really? That's with a... Is he someone's dad in that? Isn't that one of the John Hughes movies? Yeah. yeah. Jennifer, like not Jennifer, Jason one. I don't think I've ever seen that one. That might be one I've never seen. So yeah. Kind of uh, Lisa... Kyle Backer played Jenny Summers. Please tell me she's never been anything else because I don't. She's got know a few her. other things here. Okay. Ten to Midnight, Leviathan. I remember that movie. Okay. And uh, an officer and a gentleman. Oh, okay. hmm. I did see that. I don't remember her in that. That's not. She's not Deborah Winger, right? Okay. <laughs> Deborah Winger being in that. In fact, Michelle actually commented at one point when the credits were running at the end of this movie. She's like. I didn't see one female name since her name. She's like, there's like 50 people in this movie. Yeah, there's there one woman. <laughs> there was not. There was like four women in there. There was well, the there's receptionist. Strippers. Well, <laughs> the strippers were not in the cast, but like oh. the receptionist. This is the, the waitress. Last woman I have in the cast. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like the, the, they're all like little minor, yeah. minor parts. It is a man. She's up movie. here. And the rest are all men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> every other woman part was like a one line. This movie thing. doesn't pass the uh, the uh, Bechtel what, test. Whatever that thing is. Is that what's called? Yeah. I mean, sure. they don't even have two women in the no. same room at the same time, <laughs> no. let alone talking. If you don't count the strippers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> lieutenant Bogomil, played by Ronnie Cox. Wait, who was that? He Wait. was the uh, lieutenant. At, in Beverly Hills? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, it's funny because he, he was a He's bit, in one of my favorite movies. Well, he's, he's in some of my favorite movies, but you're so programmed. I, I'm so programmed to think of him as a bad guy. Because he's the bad guy in RoboCop, yep. and he's the That's bad guy. He's the bad guy in Total Recall. That's in his top four. <laughs> so when I saw him in this, I already know how this movie plays out. And I know he's not a bad cop, but I'm like, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, if I didn't know any better, I think he was going to be the bad cop. And there's a scene in here where he's telling when they're at the station, he says to Eddie Murphy, he's like, "It's not what you can prove; it's what what you can tell me." He's like, "Tell me everything." I'm like, if I didn't know any better, I'm like, 
he'd be like getting all this information out of him so he can kill him later. Yeah. yeah. And then he does he turns out it's, to be a good guy. This was the perfect movie to have him beat the bad guy. But at he's the, the end. bad like, guy in all those it, you know? other movies after this. So it was like if those <laughs> movies had come out before this, I'd have been like, This dude's definitely a dirty cop and then he turned out to be a good cop. Well you almost nailed his top four because Beverly Hills cop is in there, but can you name the other movie that's my uh, one so of my favorite Robocop movies? Robocop and Total Recall and one of my favorite uh, movies. Was he in? He was in basketball. He was in Deliverance. <laughs> oh my god! No. Was he really? Yes. Oh, oh was he the he, guitar player? He's, he's not the yeah. banjo player. But he's a guitar, he's the guitar player, player, player. Right? And he ends up. He's the one that gets his arm broke as he fall, as he goes down. He's like caught on that uh, tree oh that's in the god. water. Wow! Mm. You've never seen Deliverance? I've have seen you? bits and pieces, but not all the way through. That's a great movie. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to watch that movie again. Yeah. Huh. I like oh, that. Yeah. Did you ever see that movie? Nope. I'm not even. What year was that? Rough 74. Old, early 70s, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, not familiar. Great oh, movie. Oh, you're not even familiar with it? No, I've never heard of that movie. Really? Wow, really? Well, I there, bet you know I the mean, banjo. 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 Big directors <laughs> attached. I, I know. I might know. I forget who directed it. But it's but, uh, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds, Reynolds in it. Ned oh, Beatty. John Voight. John Voight. Okay, okay, oh, John okay. Voight. I was thinking of These someone else. These guys are rafting down the... What are they rafting down? Mid- the 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 they're going down a, not the, the river. Missi- it's a river in Louisiana. Because okay. oh. he says, he's like, why do you, he said, what do you, why do you want to go down that river? And Burt Reynolds answers, because it's there. Oh, it's, <laughs> love that's that why people said they climbed Mount Everest, because it's there. And yeah, and and the hillbillies get to hillbillies Yeah, that them. hillbilly yeah. dancing as yeah. they're playing the ban- as a kid was playing the banjo, there's an old man dancing, and, and the people in the windows of those houses as they were it was very scary. Yeah, yeah that's part of the reason I ever watched it. I it's mean, I, it's a little creepy. Might have to check it out. Then, oh yeah, yeah. it's an all time great. Don't tell. Don't tell. Don't, 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 don't say Ned Beatty getting caught up in what he gets caught yeah, up yeah, in yeah. in this movie. I wasn't going to give it away. I yeah. think I know what you're talking about. Just yeah. from having context, uh, context, knowing who and Ned knowing Beatty is over the last yeah, years. and just hearing people. Yeah, make, I don't want to. I wouldn't spoil. I don't want to spoil that for him. No, no, no. Up next, playing Victor Maitland was Stephen Burkoff. And we've had him. He didn't look familiar to me. Oh, we've oh, had him yeah. already. Oh, really? He was the bad guy in Octopussy. Yes, he oh, played I didn't Orlov. Watch that one. And he was in, I remember, I didn't know this until we saw it when we had Mac on for A Clockwork there Orange. You go. He was one of the cops Boom. in the Clockwork Orange. I was like, oh, hey, Andy's he's the bad guy. Andy's nailing these top four. I was like, he's yeah. the bad guy from Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, because we've done all these guys already. <laughs> Octopussy and A Clockwork Orange, yeah. along with Beverly Hills Cop, in his top four. The only other movie was The Tourist. Okay, I don't know that one. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Mikey Tandino was played by James Russo. Okay, I don't think I know him. Uh, Who was Mikey? Oh, that was his friend that got, that got killed. killed. Yeah. yeah. Um, why didn't they kill him too? He was right there. I know. They, they just said, let they him. Didn't, they didn't they even say he's out. The man's out. out. They yeah. Didn't didn't uh, his 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 chief say it's a professional hit or you be lying in the meat wagon too? Like because they were paid to kill him. him. They're not going to waste another bullet on him, which yeah. makes zero sense. Yeah, but you kill anybody that could have seen. Professional <laughs> hits, I guess. You, <laughs> you only kill who you're paying um, to He kill. was in Django Unchained. Oh, was he really? Oh, yeah. Hmm, the, ninth, was in that. the Ninth Gate. I think that's a horror an I 80s know the horror Ninth movie. Gate. Yeah. That's with uh, Stephen Dorff in that. Dorff? Yeah. Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Maybe the, not. Yeah, yeah. But the imitation uh, dig a, That Johnny movie, Depp. though. Yeah. I think this movie, though. Don't they dig a hole and find the gate in the backyard? I want to say I've seen that movie, and I kind of think I could see like the word "gate" carved into the ground, okay, and, like a uh, a tombstone. Yeah, like I feel like co- I've seen that like movie that a lot. I don't know, and but I might be thinking like, of something the else. Hell, the gate to hell was in their backyard, and they had dug it yeah. up by mistake or something. I don't know. I've seen could it a be lot. That. I'm going to look it up after. <laughs> Um, ba, 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 ba. all right, uh, Jonathan Banks, he's familiar. First of all, every time he shows up somewhere, I just get like so excited just to see him young. You should watch Airplane. No, I'm not oh gonna watch God. Airplane. Why? Jonathan just... Banks is in it, that's why she won't watch it. Yeah, I can't stand him. <laughs> she hates Airplane. <laughs> so, we've Have already seen, seen yes, before, a oh, okay, lot. Okay, okay. we've already seen Jonathan Banks die in 48 Hours and in yeah. Buckaroo Banzai. Buckaroo Banzai. And now we saw him die in this. Yep. We, we saw spoiled we... Buckaroo Banzai. For me. Sorry, don't watch it. Just listen yeah, to the podcast. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> And then we he, see he also, he's in one scene in that. He's a, he's a nobody in that. But, he but gets the worst in one death scene. is definitely Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. But he oh, also died. Oh, spoiler, he does in Breaking Bad. And they, he's a main character in season five <laughs> of Community, and then he just goes away. Yes, he but in season right. six, Chase, right? he's strong cartoonist yeah. too. He was a cartoonist. Yeah, he's your ducks. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get the bills right. Anyway, um, he 
the next season, there was no explanation why he wasn't there, but the next season, um, someone hacked the lunch lady's emails, and there was like an email in there that was like about his funeral. Like you're, you can go to his funeral. Oh. So he died in Community too. Oh, so, so he's one of these guys. He's like they're a Sean Bean. They starting died. To film. I know. They're filming and he the movie. Probably won't be in it because he's dead. So. But uh, Joel McHale says they're all coming back. Him. Everybody but Chevy. Every room. Oh, good. Oh, I hope Jonathan so. Bank. Jonathan I mean, Banks. Yeah. You said he's dead, but like, I, you know, I yeah. Because we were talking about when you guys came in. Logan was watching uh, Shrek Four, and I was. Th- th- it ended. All the credits were running, and I was like, man, everybody's still alive. They should just make another Shrek movie while they still have everybody. And Logan's like, well, John Cleese is dead. I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, well, he died in the third one. I'm like, dude, you don't <laughs> say John Cleese is dead. Yeah. You say the king died yeah. or something like that. I was like, I was like, how did Miss John Cleese die? And it's yeah, like one of those things one. when you knew someone, you find out someone dies today. Two years later, you find out they died again. Yeah. And you're like, they're dead. And you're like, man, really? Did I not know that. <laughs> yeah, know. There's been times I've gone on vacation. And you're like, kind of out of touch with what's yeah. going on. You're not watching the news every day, and you find out that someone died. But this, you don't you. You're like in a cloud. It doesn't yeah. affect you as much. And then once you like get home and you read about it, you're like, oh, yeah. I feel like he just died today, even though it was like a week ago. Yeah. Stephen Elliott played Chief Hubbard. That was the old his his Detroit it's in chief. Detroit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beverly Hills Cop is in his top four. Did you remember him from anything else? Wait, wait who, which one's this? The old white hair guy. The, the old the old man in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought we were, ta- were talking Hills. about the guy. In oh, Detroit. I couldn't stand his face. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you said Detroit. I meant Beverly Hills. He's like I'm one sorry. of those guys that looks Poor like man. he was like an episode of Seinfeld or something like that. Yeah. He looked well, like that kind I of guy. I saw he was in the Six Million Dollar Man. Oh, he was did he a couple really? episodes of that, but he was also in Arthur, and he was in Death Wish. Whoa. We did Death Wish too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, 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 I don't think you were on for no, he's probably cheap wasn't. in that one too. He was probably cheap. He was yeah, like one of those guys that's always playing the cheap. Just like yeah. uh, Gilbert R. Hill played Inspector Todd. That oh, was the Todd. African, that's his. That was the African American cop. He's the Detroit guy. And he yep. was a real Detroit cop. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, he's his. He only has a top three. It's Beverly Hills Cop one, two, and three. That's all oh, he's wow. done, yes. So he was a real cop and yes. just acted for this movie. I wonder how he got that part. Beverly Hills, he was really good, though. Beverly Hills police wouldn't allow them in their, in their department, so they had to build something. But Detroit, I think, allowed them oh, to wow. them behind the scenes. Man, let me stuff. tell you. That's cool. The, the 10 minutes you're in Detroit, what a dump. And <laughs> yeah. do you think they noticed after they drove an 18-wheeler down <laughs> multiple streets <laughs> and blasted all those cars? Do you think they even bothered cleaning up afterwards? Yeah. They were just like... That's it, might right. been, it looks better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> talk about they, they were probably sitting there like we got to pick a city that contrasts with Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like either Camden or Detroit. Yeah, and more people know what Detroit is, so we'll take that one. Yeah, because it does did look a lot like Camden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Surge was Bronson Pinchot. Sales. Yeah. And uh, Perfect Strangers is not really in his top four. Did you watch The Leftovers? I was just going to say, yeah, he, he was, was in listed leftovers. in Leftovers. Yeah, he was in The Leftovers. He told me about that today, or yesterday. Yeah. I was like, what? It was like, oh, well, they were watching TV <laughs> somewhere, and it was like, <clears throat> Bronson Pinchot from Perfect Strangers, one of the missing or well, something. J-Lo the, was one of the, the missing. The entire cast oh, that's of Perfect right. Strangers Yes, yes, yes. But he said Mark Van Baker. But then he lied about it, and he, yes. he, was, he was later he was on really in the there. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was saying to Jason, like, it was like the one like kind of funny thing in a show that never had any humor like no leftovers never but then had remember humor. he was also in succession mark lynn baker was in succession yes, oh, mark yes, lynn yes. Baker was. Was. Yes, yes 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 i um, can't think of what else i know him from he's just always balky to me but it's so funny because i was saying to jason after beverly hills and then perfect stranger i must have heard him interviewed on like letterman or something like that and he's he's from new york or something like that okay. or, or this he's from this area yeah and he's talking with an american accent i'm like wait yeah. Wait, wait. He's not foreign? I'm like, yeah. I had no idea that he was not an actual foreign guy based on the two yeah, things I had seen. Exactly. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop and Part 3 are both, that's oh. in his top four. Yeah, he must have seen Part 3. And the Perfect first Strangers. Wives Club is in his oh, top I four. I love that movie. I didn't see that. No, you guys won't that's like it. That's the one with like, Diane Keaton yeah. and the old ladies that are getting divorced. The Christian too. Slater yeah. movie is in his top wait. four. Well, I'm taking heart. No, I, I know it's not Heather's. Oh wait, wasn't he tr- 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 true romance? There true you romance. Go. I, you oh. know, when I think Christian Slater movies, I always forget that one because it's not in, his movie. Like, wasn't he in like Risky Business or something like that too? Wasn't he or or Bronson Pinchot? <laughs> no, it's Curtis Armstrong. Yeah, I know, but I, 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 I can picture him in my mind being in one of those like teen. 
I feel movies, like I've seen him in something But else. whatever. I mean, Look him up. Uh, it might be someone yeah. else I'm thinking about. This next guy, he was in there. If you blink, you miss him playing Jeffrey. Paul Reiser. Damn, yeah. That, that was a weird. Uh, was he nobody uh, back then? He was a then? nobody. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what made him somebody, whether it was mad about you or whether he'd done something else yeah. before that. Like, he yet, was in, yet this is he in was his an top aliens. four. Oh, is it really? Beverly Hills Cop's in his top four, what? but he's hardly in it, which makes no sense. He is one in it for one minute. Is Aliens in his top four? Aliens is in his top three. four, yes. And he was in every episode of Mad About You. 173 of them. When we were watching this last night, and Logan came in during Whip, the scene. Whiplash. That... She was in Whiplash. Oh, he's his dad. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, your, oh, yeah. Bo- your boy's dad. Yeah. Wait, your boy? No. No, it's the pe- Teller. It's Miles Teller, Miles right? Teller, it's not, yeah. I was thinking Timothy Shaman. Um, but when we were watching it, Logan, is. you know, I'm surprised Logan didn't pick up on that because he loves Whiplash. But Great movie. He, yeah, recognized, like movie. he recognized him as the legend from The Boys. He was in The Boys for right. a couple of yeah. Wait, and he was, was in Perfect Strangers. Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser. Oh, that's right. He was in The Boys. He was he in like was three in things yeah. we were watching yeah. at the same time. Yeah. We, were yeah. like, we were talking about and the Reiser other show. Stranger Things. Stranger, Stranger started, Things. Yeah, and another the show where his... Something else he was in. He was trying to bring back that show from the 80s, oh, and he the one was the Key dad. And, Key and the, uh, yes. and Greer, or Judy Greer. Yes. Judy Greer. What was that? The, re- the, the, the remake? The reboot. The reboot. Yes. Yeah, and they canceled it already. Yes. That was such a good show. Yeah. Right. I like that show. He was like the from back in the day. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> that oh, show yeah. was like going really well. That was a good show. I was oh, and uh, Johnny Just Knoxville the... was in that yes. too. Yes, that's right. Old that Ray one and then uh, Bupkis. Those are two shows Bupkis. that got canceled that I was enjoying. Yeah, Bupkis, I'm surprised they canceled that. But um, Okay, where did I leave off? Paul Reiser, right? Let's see. Playing the Banana Man. <laughs> <laughs> banana Man. Is that man. when he was listed in the credits? Yeah, yes. he was Banana Mr. Man. Wayans. Damon Wayans. This is our first Damon uh, I think movie. this is his first thing. He was in My Wife and Kids. That's a TV I show. That he, TV he, show he, I didn't yeah. watch it. But oh, that, that was a cute show. Yeah. I watched it a little bit. Do um, you want to try his top four? In Living Color? No. My mm-hmm. Wife and Kids was the only TV show. The other three were movies. Movies? The Last Boy Scout. The Last Boy Scout is in there, yes. Awesome movie. Um, what was the mo- um, mo- mo- mo money? Mo, mo money, money is yeah. in there. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Mo money, mo um, problems. Ah, damn, damn. Oh, uh, it's a spoof movie. I, I was going to say, is it Don't Be a Menace? No. Or, or one of the screen uh, scary Major movies? Pain. Is that oh. just like a, oh. it was a right? sergeant or something yeah. like that? Yeah, like a drill, drill sergeant. I don't sergeant. think it was a spoof movie. No, it wasn't? I, don't, I thought it was, uh, yeah. I don't know. But I think he's like a drill sergeant in that. I can picture him with the hat and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. And then I have one more person. I only put him on here. He played Bonded Warehouse Clerk Number Two, and the only reason I put him on here, Douglas Warhit. He was in Christine. He was his buddy in Christine. He's Arnie's buddy in Christine. He played Bonded Warehouse Clerk Number Two. Is that where he pretended to he be was also like a the body inspector? Double. He was in Body Double. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for like a second in that. Just too, like right? this we're is talking it. about it. Christine, yeah. he's like the best friend. Yeah. The good so looking guy that looks more, like River yeah. Phoenix. And we're like, why yeah. did this guy do more stuff? And he's Body just... double, we don't see him that much. And then we don't see him that much in this either, I don't think. Right? So bonded warehouse. So so that's where he goes into the warehouse and he's pretending to be the, the inspector. Um, inspector right? and yeah, at the end there. The he's like, yeah, he's is saying, he the guy that he's yelling at? And he's like, get your get I your think you might have been one of the other guys in the back because he's number two. Yeah, right, yeah. Because I thought at first when they... And there was a scene in here where they brought um, when 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 Axel and Je- Je- Jesse Je- Julie? Jenny? Jenny 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 she's the women are so unimportant in this movie. I can't even <laughs> to remember her name. <laughs> They're hiding in the warehouse, and then the two guys bring the crate in, open the crate, take the coke out, put the coke on top of the crate, put the crate top back on, <laughs> and put the crate back in the van and drive away. I'm like, what? They, they did that. They couldn't do do that in the van, in the, <laughs> but I thought that one guy was um, uh, Frenchy from Goodfellas, and he was in Dumb and Dumber, the one that they kill with the. But it's not him. Yeah. But I, I heard him talk, and I'm like, oh my god, that's the guy from Goodfellas. And then I got a good look at his face. I'm like, ah, no, that's not him. <laughs> that's it for the cast. Let's talk this movie. Before we get too far away from that, I did have a Damon Wayans. Oh, yeah. Wayans. 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 Way um, out. I didn't know this until yesterday um, that he was a cast member on SNL for a little while around mm-hmm. the time of this movie, and he was fired actually because he was ad libbing. Yeah, I don't um, think he made it through a whole season. Oh, yeah. wow. like a I don't know, but I saw that and I was like, no way. 
I think that's when that's they decided to do, do Living, living color. color. Yeah. I think he went to his brother and said, oh, okay. can we do something else? And he's like, Let's I do it got an idea. Because yeah. <laughs> when was the Living Color? Late 80s, right? Like 89. Yeah. yeah. Great show. Because the then first, we have to deal with Jennifer couple Lopez, couple though. are awesome, man. I love that show. Yeah. Until, oh, until yeah, the absolutely. Left. They all left like the same time. Well, Damon and, and Keenan Ivory left at the yeah. same time. Yeah. They were the, they Those were the first best parts. three, two, three yeah. seasons were amazing. David Allen Greer was so yes. good on that show. <laughs> and yes. so it was like J.B. Fox, man. Like I remember yeah. when J.B. Fox all of a sudden became a real actor. I'm like... The doofy guy in Living yeah. Color. Do I would get dressed up like a girl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the teeth out. Shanae, right? Was that Shanae? Yeah. yeah. That was a good Something, show. Yeah. They were the ones that started the whole halftime Super Bowl thing because they put up a, an episode of In Living Color mm-hmm. on Fox up against the <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show, which at that point was like yeah. the yeah. USC marching band, and everybody turned it to Fox to watch In Living Color, and it was the the men on. Yeah, uh, men on da- film. Da- Damon, yeah. Damon, and, and, and uh, David Allen Greer. David Allen Greer. And they were doing men on football. Oh, football. And they were okay. doing the whole thing like, <laughs> is that the one where they're like, yeah, yep. two yeah. snaps in Love a circle. It. I'm going to yeah. put this blue ball between my legs and you're going to grab it. I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous. It was always brought ridiculous. to them, brought yeah. to you by Ben Gay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's, that took all the ratings away from the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah. So the yeah. next year, the Super Bowl was like, we're putting Michael Jackson at halftime. Yeah. And so everybody stayed with that. And then that stopped that anybody competing with the halftime. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was all about in, uh, in living color. I didn't like the name in living color because I hated the band Living Color, and I was like, I hate <laughs> it saying that. It was very confusing name. at the time. Yeah, one had a U in the color. I don't even remember which one it was. I think the yeah. band had a U. So we were talking about who Andy was saying there was somebody that was supposed to play Axel Foley. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys want to guess who that was? Um, I the, mean, it could be so many. It people. could be so many, but the, the actors, the the character's name was last name Copretti, which I don't know if that's so a okay. Or not. So Italian, uh, an Italian actor, it, white okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, or, think or, about what, what time Italian is. White. Think about what time it is. I was yeah. <laughs> no, um, <they> um, <laughs> for some reason, completely Al Pacino. No. No. no? Oh, not yes. Robert De Niro. No. Oh, I no. thought she was going to say. She's going to get it right there. <laughs> like, yeah, like, um, I'm just running through all the <laughs> Do Italian. Do you know who it was? Oh. Uh, a comedian? No. No. This would okay. have been a much more action heavy movie. Yes. Sylvester Stallone? Yes. Oh, thank God it wasn't him. Because he took a lot of the points that he apparently like he wanted to rewrite it. Yeah, he, he rewrote did rewrite it. it. He rewrote Who it. Who rewrote it? He rewrote it. Well, most of that script became yeah. Cobra. Cobra. That's why his and name, his is, name Cobretti. is Cobretti in there. Yeah. Oh, his name is Cobra. That's how it's Marianne That's why it's Cobretti. Cobretti. Okay. So he rewrote it when he got the script, and then when he didn't get it, did they go back to the original he script? Not, he decided not to do it. Yeah. And one of the reasons that's rumored for him to not do it, let me pull up my notes here. <coughs> <laughs> it said Stallone, uh, he left weeks before shooting because of orange juice, maybe. It says, the Hollywood legend is that <laughs> Sylvester Stallone abandoned the project thanks to failed negotiations over what type of orange juice was to be kept in his trailer. <laughs> the official explanation was that Stallone's script made the budget skyrocket and Paramount did not want to spend all the extra money. The majority of Stallone's script went into the, his 1986 movie Cobra and as a nod to Stallone's involvement, Judge Reinhold's character, Billy Rosewood, has posters of both Cobra and and Rambo in his room in Beverly Hills Cop 2. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say, well, he's all his room? Okay. In part two, he's like a gun-toting maniac in that way. Yes. Judge Reinhold, like, he's got guns all over. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean the real question here is, is he no pulp? Some pulp? <laughs> like, how much is the problem here? You know, how much is the problem? Did, did it have to be freshly squoze? Did they have to, like, <laughs> fly in, like, a million oranges and squeeze them I'm daily? I'm glad because this movie would not have been good with We him would not be doing this movie. No. Oh, like, wouldn't uh, be, uh, in Stallone's, Stallone's be ending, uh, no. Stallone's ending had Axel drives a stolen Lamborghini towards a freight train being driven by the big bad. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> now I'm no, now I'm no, I'm no, uh, I, I want to say physician. I'm, I have no physics expert, but a Lamborghini versus a free train, I would imagine the train would win <laughs> that would one. Imagine. Also, the banana and the pe- tailpipe, that doesn't, you have to use multiple bananas because yeah. it's so small, but it was originally supposed to be a potato. Which but is they a couldn't thing get, for they sure. couldn't get a scene where he walks into the kitchen to get a potato because it would have taken them too far out of the movie. I thought you were going to tell me they couldn't get the rights to potatoes I or something. Like that. No, they could, they, you can't use potatoes in this. The potato council says could, no. They couldn't get a scene him going into the kitchen. It made no been, sense then going out. They just had to put so, it yeah. like right there in the lobby. That's yeah. I wonder if anyone in real life after this came out tried the bananas uh, and does it work? Uh, yes. Does yeah. it work? Yeah. 
Well, did I you do it? Try, I if you put enough potatoes. of them in there, you got to put enough of them in there to yeah, block we it. We did okay. it with potatoes. Yeah. You did? Oh, yeah. yeah it was. Jesus Christ. Kids. Um, <laughs> the one name that I was actually kind of surprised about when, I, when this movie started was Jerry Bruckheimer's name as the producer. Not that he's like, whatever, Jerry Bruckheimer, but I was like, oh, I didn't know he was involved. You know what in this movie Eddie like, turned down to do this one, right? No. Yeah, because we just talked we about it. We just talked about it. Why are you guys looking? Why should look at Connor? Because he wasn't on it. for that one. Oh, but you mean the movie? Who are you going to call? Oh, oh, he turned on Ghostbusters. Oh, that's yeah, right. We did talk about Winston. this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was better. It was better off. They would have had to rewrite that part. Yeah. I mean, this movie, I, I they was They did talking, rewrite the part. That's no, why. No, I'm um, saying, like, if it was Eddie Murphy, like, he'd have yeah, to be the star He'd have to movie. be the star. I agree. Because I was saying to Jason before, um, you know, this is our third Eddie Murphy movie, but this is the first Eddie Murphy. Where he was the lead. It was Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. It was Nick yeah. Nolte and Eddie Murphy. Now it's just Eddie Murphy and a bunch of other people. Yeah. And, ju- the and then it's like, and Judge Reinhold? Judge Reinhold? <laughs> the guy from the guy from Fast. The smaller <laughs> font. The guy, like down there, the yeah. guy that's jerking off the Phoebe Case in, in Fast Times? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now she's locked down. Now she's, she's locked, locked down. down. Good job, dude. Way to use was, the lingo. Uh, it oh, was yeah. Damon Wayne's film debut. Oh, it was? Okay. Yep. He so, looked really young. He, yeah. uh, how old was he? Do you know? No. He seems like he could have been like 19, 20. 20 or something yeah. like that. Um, he was uh, Eddie Murphy drove a Chevy Nova, which I drove. This was a 1970. I looked it up. I'm like, what? What's Nova? What year was your Nova? 76. So they weren't the exact same one. But how did that thing make it from Detroit to Beverly Hills, California? Same way that the Karate Kid made it from they, New that's York right. to yeah, that's right. they California. Drove all the way New Jersey. Too. They came from New York. Uh, did I say Detroit? Yeah. I meant to say New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. but they drove uh, all the David way Wayne was 24. Wow. Oh, okay. When he younger. parks at like the country club and he goes, Can you put this in a oh, good spot? God. All this shit happened last time I parked here. That was, <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so um it was two two hundred and thirty nine dollars a night at the Beverly Hills. That's cheap. Yeah. I was like, that's not man, bad. That's like a yeah. Motel Six nowadays. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was gonna say you can't like get into a Marriott though. for that. I wonder what yeah. it's yeah. probably, probably for inflation. That's I was probably say, crazy. You probably put a one in front. It's probably like twelve hundred dollars. Which uh, hotel was it again? Wasn't the Beverly Hills? Beverly hotel? Hills uh, pa- uh, Palms. Oh, oh okay. okay. I was wondering if it was the same hotel in Pretty Woman. I think she was at the Beverly Hills Wilshire. Yeah, is that a That's different. Yeah, yeah. So it, it very uh, early I have, on, I have okay. the adjusted to uh, oh. 2019 inflation. What, the 239? Yeah. 235? The oh. 235. 2000, adjusted to inflation for 2019, so that's five years ago, so it still would be higher probably. That would be $630 a night oh, in 2019. That seems wow. reasonable. But in Joe Biden's America, it's probably like $1,200. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> the inflation I can't afford to stay everything. in Beverly Hills anymore. <laughs> I can barely stay in this house. It's this was uh, 1984's second highest grossing film behind... Ghostbusters. No. Hmm. Why are you always looking at me for these things? Because they're Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, no. Terminator now. Uh, Gremlins. Why did we just mention that, that? Or no, we didn't just mention it, I don't think. No, we Have we done it yet this year? Yeah, we did. Oh. Indiana Jones. There I forget you go. every movie Indiana we've done. Indiana Jones. Okay. Okay. Oh, it was a temple. <laughs> temple of Doom. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to steal this from Dana, but I wrote it down also about... Um, his exit from the first place where they oh yeah that really first of all and then they kept blaming him for it throughout the entire movie um when he was dragged out of the hotel was no, it the hotel no, it was out, was out of, it? Out of uh, maitland's his, office. his offices the security are dragging him, dragging him the window which was next to the damn yeah. door and then so everyone kept blaming him for being thrown out <laughs> the like door the cops wouldn't question that at yeah. all yeah and now, <laughs> and now they're like, now they have to get that fixed. Yes, yeah. that's their like, own They have building. to get a new window yes. put in they there. They probably have something right there working. With it. They <laughs> yeah. probably have the glass they already do it all back time. there. Yeah. The guys were they sitting have, like, there with the windows windows like, suction cup things. Like, oh, <laughs> the guys I'm going to another paint window. the name on there already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that made no sense. Um, he laughs at the two guys wearing the... Do the laugh. Do the laugh. <laughs> no, I don't See, think I, I don't you think sound like Lewis. Perfect. It's a, it's Lewis and Axel have the same damn laugh. Like <laughs> you could be a nerd or you could be the coolest a guy coolest in the world. In the world, yeah. But he laughs at those two guys wearing the red leather outfits, yes. right and that's exactly what he yes. was wearing. Delirious. Yes. Delirious. Yeah. And delirious. And it was like, came I up like how the this. jackets were like reversed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, yeah. Black, black, black. I really thought. Did one of them have the glove? I have a core memory mm. of one of them wearing the glove. I didn't, I didn't see a glove. I don't remember. I just I don't know what it maybe in a music video for it i really feel like 
uh, Eddie had I a thought, glove, you're saying? No, or? one of the two guys. I really thought they were always wearing the gloves. So for Connor here, who has no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> yeah. Eddie Murphy did two very famous stand-up specials that were in the theater, right? I mean, Raw definitely was in the mm-hmm. theater. Delirious, I think, was in the theater also. But he wore a red leather outfit. And then the other one was like a purplish, bluish kind of outfit. Yes. But like just leather. And so it was funny that he was yeah. wearing it, making fun of those <laughs> so guys. So it sounds like thinking Michael Jackson. It I was. Those, and that's so. why I swore... I'm going to have to find it. Because was there a music video for this? I feel like there oh was. Oh, my God, yes. And I feel like maybe it was a music video. Maybe they put it's the possible, gloves yeah. on the guy. I'm just saying I don't recall it. Yeah. Yeah, there possible, were parts yeah. of this movie as I was watching it t- last night that I remembered more from the video than I remember yes. from watching this movie like 10 yeah. times. Like there's the scene where Maitland comes around the corner with the gun and then he backs off. Because remember, in the, in the video, this was for the... The Axel F theme song, the the yes. the, the um do, do, your Peter do, Griffin do, song. Do, yeah. do, do, do. <laughs> Did you a- know that song at all? The whole theme song throughout the whole movie? Oh yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Have you ever seen this before? No. Okay. So they made a the video had Harold Faltemeyer in the video. Yeah. And like he would pop up in it and like Maitland would come around the corner with the gun, the scene in the at the end there where he just got the gun, and then he would he would pull the gun back. Because Harold Faltemar is standing there, but obviously they're just taking the clip from the yeah. movie and running it backwards <laughs> so that he pulls the gun back. I'm just like, oh my God, I remember this from the stupid video. Yeah. All and right. And see with Judge Reinhold in the car, like as the other two are in the warehouse and he keeps seeing people coming out and he's yeah. like looking sh- and he keeps deciding whether he's going to get out of the car. And that was like in the video the whole time. They just kept going back and forth to Judge Reinhold. I'm like, yeah. do I get out of the car? Do I get out of the car? <laughs> so I got um, some more people that were uh, possibly supposed to. Where they were considered to play uh, the role, uh, Eddie Murphy's role. Uh, Mickey Rourke was possibly uh, was in the running at one point too, which was uh, he left to do Pope at Greenwich Village, which we'll be doing next. Yeah, Danny's is that coming the up next one? Cool. Yes. Um, here's our list, though. Uh, Jeff Bridges, James Caan. This is for who? This is for Eddie Murphy's part. Axel Foley. Mm-hmm. Yes. Billy Crystal. Mm. Bobby De Niro. Mm-mm. Harrison Ford, Mm-mm. Richard Gere. No, he's not funny. Mel Gibson. You put not any funny. of those people in the movie, it's not the same movie. Nope. Gregory Hines, Michael Keaton, mm. Nick Nolte. Michael Keaton could have made it funny. Al Pacino, Richard Pryor, Dennis Quaid, Kurt Russell. He's going to say my name eventually. I mean, he's like every Andy single Gonzalez. person was alive in 1984. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh God! John Travolta. Oh my goodness! Mm. Robin Williams every and Bruce Willis. Willis. I think they just send out a cast. They, they, they just send out to every agent in the, in, in the world and say, "We got this movie. Anybody interested?" And uh, Bronson Pinchot almost dropped out as well. He had a, a trip to uh, Italy planned. Oh, to prepare and, uh, for. They had some delays in production. He said, "If this doesn't, if we don't start working, I'm gonna." I'm going to yeah. quit, you said. That's really like, funny. What was people, his job? Like, yeah, that's like, funny. They're like, what demands are you making? Dude? Yeah. Like, and that's what they scenes. said. He was a nobody yeah. at the time. He said he's, he's just going to drop he out of his movie. He had been in Risky yeah. Business before this. Was yeah. he in Risky yeah. Business? Oh, that was his first, up? That oh, okay. Was his I was going to say, I thought I remember yeah. him being in that. That's the very first uh, acting credit. But I think I remember him being in that from this last time that we watched it, not from when I saw it yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Um. How much red meat do you have in your colon, Jason? You're almost 50. Seven pounds? Why are you telling me all this? <laughs> what was it? Seven pounds? Six pounds? Five, five, five. five. That was like an yeah. insane statement. I'm like, that can't even be accurate. Like, that has to be the most nonsense thing I've ever... You would have, like, died from some, like, infection if there was just five pounds of rotting meat in your body. Yeah, like, what gross. are you talking about? There was one thing I was keeping track of in this movie because he arrives in Beverly Hills, whatever. He does a whole bunch of stuff. Including like you know getting arrested and spending time in jail and blah 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 blah, and he was wearing that Mumford Fizz Ed shirt the entire time. I'm like, it's a is real this school. All the same day, <laughs> is he wearing that shirt for multiple days? And then the the day where he was doing the stakeout when the other cops got assigned to watch him, he was wearing like a just a regular gray sweatshirt. And I was like, oh thank God, like he changed that shirt because <laughs> I don't know if that all took place in one day, but he must be stinky after driving halfway across the country yeah. in that shirt. And then doing all the stuff that he did that day. Yeah. Including the, uh, going to a strip club. <laughs> Axel Foley's t shirt is from Mumford, a real life Detroit area school. Oh, One okay. of the filmmakers attended. When the film came out, the school got orders for their shirts from customers all over the world. There you go. Huh. But it, he was just wearing it for so long. I was like, oh man, yeah. it must be smelly. 
especially just driving for, have, I don't know how long the, the drive is, but it's got to mm-hmm. be like over 24 they hours. Offered, for sure. They offered this movie to Scorsese. He turned it down. Uh, he said it's, the premise, not, it's not based on real gangsters. He said the premise <laughs> reminded him too much of Coogan's Bluff, a movie from 1968. What? And, uh, yeah. One other person that was offered to direct it but turned it down, David Cronenberg. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> that would have been an interesting. Some body horror. With <laughs> would, have been a lot, would have been a lot more sexual, too, I think. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there was like no sex in this, except for, I guess, the strip, the strip club, club scene. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. That's, there was mild nudity, yeah. I think, is what it said. In, uh, they had to get a f- the other female in there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, her name is like at the end. It doesn't even have her picture on IMDb. <laughs> uh, what do you got? Anything you want to share? I'm running low on notes here. Um, I'll mention a few things. Uh, I thought one of the funnier moments when, actually right after the strip club that we were just talking about, when um, they get back and they're explaining a story to Lieutenant and... Eddie Murphy gives them that just like nonsense like story about them being super cops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, I just want you guys to know that was working and you just you threw it out. <laughs> yeah. I just made that perfect lie and you just <laughs> threw it out the window. He goes, that was going to work. And that was that funny. Was, that was pretty good. But it was great how they brought that back because then the lieutenant yep, lied yeah, yeah. to the yeah. chief and, yeah. then, and then Tagger backed him up. He's like, that's exactly how it happened. Why yeah. would I say anything else? That's I what remember happened. being <laughs> so excited for Beverly Hills Cop 2 because... I think the pre- like that's the one with uh, Brigitte Nielsen in it. And I don't remember even what the plot is. That the one of the with Gilbert? Movie. I don't know. I, I don't think Gilbert's in part two. But hmm. uh, the lieutenant, Ronnie Cox, gets shot in like the first scene. He's like walking to his car and someone drives like by. Shot and shoot. Killed? Yeah, no, okay. I think he's like in, in intensive care basically okay. the entire movie. But then Judge Reinhold and, and, and Taggart call Eddie Murphy and he comes from Detroit to investigate it and stuff like that. But it was fun. That was like one of those fun, like, sequel things where they go to the lieutenant's house and there's like pictures of eddie murphy with the crew the, these guys like fishing like so after this after you know the fake history of them like there was a continued friendship yeah. afterwards where they're like <laughs> hey come out to beverly hills and we'll go fishing and stuff like that. yeah. it's like, that's so cool except for the fact that the dude just got shot and that's probably gonna end their friendship now but spoiler he lives do you have herpes <laughs> simplex 10 I, I said that must be very itchy <laughs> i've never had herpes but i've always heard it's very itchy and simplex 10 the must hostess be. is uh or the host's face when you said that and you go yeah you better tell him <laughs> you better. You better that was a great that. scene because then he that's when he uh throws Jonathan Banks into the buffet and stuff like that. <laughs> Do you remember what kind of cigarettes Axel smokes? The Lucky Strikes? That was no, what? That's in the Paul Malls? He was selling Paul Lucky Malls Strikes Lucky Strikes. Lucky Strikes was in the truck. Yeah, with the Paul Malls. But he Malls says, right? that, these aren't even my cigarettes. These are my oh. cigarettes. I don't even smoke this kind of cigarettes. I smoke uh, King Size Kents. King size I never Kent's. heard it. Was that a real cigarette? Kents for a cigarette, yeah. Oh. My dad, for a long time, in his little collection of stuff in our like den, had a pack of, like a really old pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Like he held on to them? Yeah. Yeah. And, like the with cigarettes in it still? I don't know. I think so. I just remember it sitting there, and he was like, that's an old kind of cigarette. Yeah, Lucky Strikes had no filters. Uh, or at no. least they the, the kinds that were common back then. Back in the, in the 50s. The 70s. Or, no, I'm talking about in the 70s oh, and 80s, 70s. because I remember... You know, working at a liquor store and we yeah. carried cigarettes and they were the only ones that didn't have didn't filters. Didn't Camels not and have Camels filters for had no a filter. long time? Well, I remember we were going to a concert and I had to buy cigarettes on the way and we stopped on the turnpike at a rest stop and I was just like, I'm buying cigarettes out of the vending machine. Yeah. And I'm like, Camels, because I smoked them back then, pulled it out and it came out in this, like the half the size of yeah. the pack. I'm like... What did I just You're get? Spitting out I was tobacco like, the whole shit. night. I'm like they're Ugh. not filters. I'm like <laughs> Joe Camel. I was like, mm-hmm. I, I was like, well, I can't smoke all these because you know now it's going to be yeah. twice. The, did you used to collect uh, all, all the little things off of the th- uh, the cigarette packs you could buy? Joe Dana, Camel gear. My bathroom had the Joe Camel shower curtain <laughs> oh on, you know, <laughs> because we used to collect all the, the oh ashtray. Um, <laughs> I had some other shit, but like. We, I smoked Camels and both my roommates smoked Marlboros and Marlboros did we the Marlboro box yeah. too. Yeah. And my we stepfather like, had the Marlboro. He had a bunch of, he got a bunch of duffel bags. He smoked a lot way back in, I guess it was the late eighties. And we had a bunch of these big red Marlboro duffel bags that oh, we had duffel, got. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had the play, I had Camel playing cards. I have Marlboro playing cards. I think I have coasters, yeah. Camel coasters. 
some of that stuff's like in box. I've, I've come across it recently, but I don't know. Man, the way they yet. just got everybody with that advertising of smoky and cigarettes and kids. get this shit. Gear it towards yeah. kids. Hey, get this beach ball. Get this yeah. beach ball. ball beach t- yeah. Like. Um, oh. I'm not a coffee drinker, but do you guys like espresso with a lemon twist? Is that is that good? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. I, I, just, know, like, I, I just like plain black coffee. <laughs> I just yeah. love plain I've black been, coffee. I've not so. had it, but I, I did enjoy when he asked for it and he goes, he goes, if that's not too much of a bother, he goes, don't be fucking stupid or whatever he said to him. I was like, oh my God. If he had said, don't be ridiculous, don't that would have been ridiculous. so that's funny. That's obviously where he, get it. Yeah. he got it from. But he, yeah. yeah, that exchange when they were like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, oh no, I can't because that's, <laughs> that, that was so good. Do you remember what suite number Axel was staying in? Mm, two something, right? Two, two, oh, two I four. I say 237. Yeah. So that's a shiny. His hotel room at the Beverly Hills Hotel is at. Sweet 1035. Oh, I really thought it was a two. No, he's up high. Remember, he's on the... Mm. Do you ever see him actually in his room? No, we never see the room. Do you see him in his room? Yeah, because he goes up there with... Oh, the female, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. Did I mention, <laughs> and did they I mention wow. Axel F on That's this podcast? That's when he makes, oh, so he makes the dinner <laughs> for the yeah, yeah, on this one or the other one. Oh. Did I mention that in between podcasts, Axel F, or did I mention that on the podcast? No, I think it was during one of the podcasts, okay. yeah. Because I was going to mention that again. I can't remember if I mentioned it on the podcast. Oh, or during the mini? Uh, we talked about it, for right. sure. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I've said it in the middle of the between the two podcasts. I think we talked about it here because we yeah. were talking about okay. someone's... I think we were talking about John Aston's yes, top, top four, four, and that's already in his top four yes. or something like that. I also will definitely give the movie credit that it didn't fall for the cliche of like Eddie Murphy's character and... Those the girl two hooking of, up. like hooking yeah. up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I, when that happened, I'm like, oh, this is definitely yeah. happening. And it didn't. I'm like, wow, they just let him be I friends. Mean, yeah. I'm like, that yeah. never happened. You hooked up with no women in this. That is weird for yeah. a leading man back in yeah. the 80s not to hook yeah, up there with women. No like, that is side but I was like, love cool story, you know. I was like, cool, just no focus on the story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm cool with that's when and then that's when you get stuck with a two hour and twenty minute movie that's crap. I honestly was expecting that too. I I haven't seen the movie in thirty years, so I couldn't remember. But I was expecting that they would have a little fling. Oh, so you had seen it. this movie before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were, I saw it a lot we were wondering as a kid. Out earlier if you had seen yeah. it or Based not. on yeah. the casting in this movie, I'm surprised, like, th- there weren't relationships with, like, Judge Reinhold and, and John Aston or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's no women in this movie. Though. I know. <laughs> right? Uh, Do sergeants have partners? And you know what? When he said sergeant this and detective that, I'm like, wait, detectives with a sergeant? I looked it up because I was like, I don't. But that's a very oh, common thing. It is those okay. two are, yeah. like, oh, okay. I'm used to like Lethal Weapon where it's two detectives, two detectives. are, yeah, are yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. But apparently, and the sergeant's like, the boss of all the detectives, and right? Apparently, like the sergeant's kind of like the he directs the directors where yeah. they're going and stuff yeah. like that. But hmm. it's not uncommon for a sergeant and a detective to be partnered up together. But uh, it is. Un- it is very not uncommon to have your bad guys shoot like stormtroopers like the end of this movie where they were spraying yes. oh, the place yeah. with bullets and all around their feet all around, the, the, all um, around their bodies there was like a cement wall and yes. the bullets were coming straight up and out of the ve- wall <laughs> it was yes. very Three Stooges like when they were running to jump over that Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 behind it, I was like, yeah. "Oh wow!" That was like the one, that was the one scene in this movie where I was kind of like, "Man, I'm like, because this movie is not written like a comedy. It is a police procedural mm-hmm. action movie with a very funny lead actor. So you're almost basically like, we're not going to write comedy in it. You'll just be funny. Yeah. But that scene where they're like on his shoulders, and that was really and, them. Yeah, oh, because you, you, John, see, him you fall see him fall. That's yeah, his yeah. face. Yeah, but I was like, you just ran around that side and said, "Let's cl-, like." All yeah. you have to do is walk back like five steps and go around. I was like, why are you doing this? Because it is very slapsticky. Yes. Which this movie has none. This movie's not a slapstick movie at no. all. It's the first R rated film in history to gross over 200 million domestically. Wow. 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 Yeah, this was, you said this was second overall for the year, right? Wait, so this was R rated? Oh. Yes. Dude. Well, they said motherfucker like 80 times. In this. Oh, I didn't know if the Make 80s women. rules were different. <laughs> oh, this was At the beginning arm. of the movie, when his friend gets killed, there was no blood. And they shot him in the back of the head twice. That, so I was like, oh, maybe it's mouth. not rated R. Did you see that? Because, yeah, like, yeah, you know, oh, I, I was surprised to see, yeah. actually see that scene. I was expecting them to either cut away or cut do away. something. Yeah, sure, but yeah. when they shot him in the head, and you just see it happen, and something flew yeah. out of his mouth. But You don't see anything on like the wall no, or anything. You know, no. Yeah. I was really surprised they showed that. Um, I was talking to Jason earlier today about this because, I, like, even by 80s standards, I was really kind of shocked about the language in the strip yeah. club when they were talking about like the dick the whole time, hundred times. Like, yeah, 
damn, I'm like, I mean, they're being very, I mean, they aren't. He is yeah. being very, like, kind of brazen. I was like, Jeez. I had to hit I'm pause like, during that scene because we had, um, we're having work done in the house, and this guy was <laughs> walking through. He's like, "What he are you was, watching? So are you he talking was, about hard on. Uh, here's He's my like, TV. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> and there's my back door. He put a new storm door on, and that's the exact time he because he was doing gutters, things like that. And just then, he goes to do the storm door, and I'm like. I can't risk him walking in here and seeing these strippers and hearing them talk about hard, like he'll sit down next to you like, are you like, watching? Oh my God, this is taking so notes. Can you, I'm right, yeah, I'm taking notes. Can you notes. rewind it like a minute yeah. so I can see the beginning yeah. of the scene? I was like, oh, so I just, and then like I had to hit it on Paul's in the right so it wasn't like naked girl in the back either. Yeah. I had to like, okay, Did make sure it's right right One that, girl yeah. with like tape over her boobs. Were they actually no. like oh, yeah. naked girls? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I guess I. Do you need to go rewatch well, it? Well, maybe I was quick? taking Paul down the wrong spot. On the wrong spot. I was like, probably just so blown back by the hard on conversation. Which, <laughs> no. listen, I don't give a shit at all. I was just kind of like, wow, 1984. This must have been like, yeah. Eddie Murphy had this reputation of being the dirtiest comic yeah. alive, yeah. and that scene right there, I was like, damn. And that's why right? that's why uh, Bill Cosby w- was not a fan of uh, Eddie right. Murphy. <laughs> I have a body yeah, well, count. Well, you for know this what? Movie. Let's talk about Bill Cosby. He sh- he has no room to talk. Well, he was actually that's the yeah. funniest yeah. thing about it. Yeah, yeah. Said, you know, he's yeah. he's judging Eddie Murphy exactly. for his language while he's raping women. Yeah, like, hmm. I got a body count for this movie. Wow. So what do you like, oh, there were like. Count. 20 guys at the end that were just getting mowed yeah. down all over the place. And we're not so. even close to that many in this, no. Too high? No, oh, too low. It's lower. Seven. No, wait. You're saying... Seven? How many people I'm were... Gonna go I'm going to go five. I'm saying tw- whatever number you just said was too high. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so, so, realistic, there were like eight guys there that got killed, plus his friend... What did you say? Five. Five. Plus the guy that, that Judge Reinhold killed at the no, you can't do math. Uh, warehouse. Gotta go on your gut. I'm gonna say like twelve. <laughs> I'm gonna say twelve. Okay. On Seven camera. is correct. Really? Good job. Mike, Bingo. first Mikey. Or what do we got here? I have Axel. Let's see. Final count: Maitland's goon is one. Axel kills three. Rosewood kills two. And Axel and Bogo Mill kill uh, Victor at oh, the end. Oh yeah. There. Mm, that's okay. seven, yeah. They shot him a lot of times. <laughs> that was a nice like way they did that with Eddie Murphy down on his knee. Yeah. yeah guy right behind him shooting over him. I was yeah. like, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready for scores unless anybody Wait, has anything um, else. This was the first time I've ever watched this movie, and I understood the reference that when they were lo- – when, when – uh, when Rosewood, Rosewood, right? Rosewood, yeah. Rosewood and Tag, I kept calling him Judge Reinhold because I remember that easier. Rosewood and Tagger were lying there getting shot at. It's Rosebud. And uh, well, Thank you. this isn't that old reference, but they were referencing Butch Cassidy's. Like it's like oh, Butch yeah, Cassidy yeah. at the end when they ran them. Yeah. I remember watching this movie so many times, not getting that reference. But I've seen Butch Cassidy yes. and Sundance Kid since yeah. then. I know at the end, and they die. They right? run out. Well, it freeze frames. Yeah, you know they're but getting you killed. They die, so yeah. I was like, why is he so excited about <laughs> yeah. getting like shot? The, end of the up Devil's right Rejects now. when they're all getting shot. That's a great movie. Mm. Um, <laughs> I don't think that Eddie Murphy's bag at the end there could hold three robes. It didn't look like it held much. <laughs> and bigger question: I want one those cops room. showed up and paid his tab. What was his exit strategy? Because he just walked up there saying, he was like, "Ready to pay? I'm ready to like he I'm moving like he was ready to like, pay. He was there for at least a thousand dollars. Maybe worth he had of, maybe he had the money. He was ready to maybe, pay. He was, yeah, was, never was, know. That was, was all his savings. <laughs> if he came out and paid in like German Deutschmarks or something like that with those bear pies, like you, you guys take it. But I was like, how, was he just gonna pay this all? He's like, you guys. <laughs> um, well, before we do scores, I forgot to mention the other funny part that I really liked when um, he's still in Detroit and the, I don't know, I don't know if he's the chief or lieutenant over there. Todd, the, the, his guy that was yelling at him? Yeah, 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 he's like walking away and he's like, wait, wait, wait. And he goes, and he's like, don't let whoever bring it down. You still got some ass on you or whatever. <laughs> and my ass off. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was so funny. Oh my God. That was good. <laughs> You want to start us off, Dana? Sure. Um, and you said no score for Tara, right? No. Mm-mm. All right. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I liked it as a kid as well. Um, I gave it an 85. 85 for Dana. Nice. All right. I'm going to, I'm right around there. I enjoyed this movie a lot. I watched it. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Yeah, me either. Um, so, um, seeing it again kind of brought back memories. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So I'm giving it an 83. I enjoy this movie, and I'm looking forward to part two mm-hmm. with Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, he is in yes. that? Okay, cool. What year? 90s, it's 87. 87, yeah. okay. I um, don't like this as much as Trading Places. I think Trading Places is actually my favorite Eddie Murphy movie. 
I like I, this one better than the trading places. I gave I think. this mm-hmm, score. I put the score down. Then Michelle gave me her score, so there was no funny play here. So <laughs> I wrote my score down. I said to Michelle at lunch, I'm like, oh, you never gave me a score. And she's like, oh, uh, and she gave me the score. And then I went back and looked at my trading places score, and everything lines up. I gave trading places a 90. Okay. I gave this movie an 85. Okay. And Michelle gave this movie an 85. Nice. That's why I wanted to make sure. Like, That's when I, 385 when I said, <laughs> out there I mean, right now. She didn't say 85, and I'm just like, yeah, I just give it an 85, yeah. too. I did it first, and then she I said 85. I switched it up and like, gave right. it an 83, at least. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. A little bit of originality there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you watch this with anybody? Karen Brian and Brady. Oh, okay. They didn't they give you give scores? Score. No, no scores. Tell promoted. Brian to come back on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. What was I Brian do? doing? Just sitting there moaning about his heart? <laughs> he was talking to his inner monologue. <laughs> he was the whole, the whole time, actually. Or not the whole time, but a few times. He was like, so guys, do you know this about this? And he was like throwing out like trivia about <laughs> shit. And I was about like, the movie? something that would be interesting to sit on a podcast and talk about? Yeah, right? a movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where do you think I got the Damon Wayans SNL stuff from? Oh, okay. He was like, say that. He, I'm like, <laughs> you could call him and say that. But, you know, did, uh, did Brady give you a score? No, he didn't. Right. He, he actually may have went to bed before it ended because right. I did start a little bit late. I think Brady's um, here right now, actually. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I liked it. It was pretty good. And this um, was your first time seeing it, correct? correct? My first time yeah. seeing it. Now, is this your first Eddie Murphy movie? No. Or, I mean, like classic Eddie Murphy. I don't mean Shrek or you know Dream Girls or something like that. I mean, like, <laughs> I've seen Trading Places. Oh yeah, okay. I love Trading Places. Right. That's a great movie. Um, what was it? There was the other Eddie Murphy movie I've seen where he's like, is he like f- like I don't even know how to describe this. He's like got like little people inside of him who are yes, also yes, him. Yes, 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 yes. And he shrinks down. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called, but I've seen okay, it. Okay, well, whatever that Norbit? is. never even heard Norbit? of this Is it called movie. Norbit? No, I don't think it's that one. But there is a movie. Yeah, there's I don't a little spaceship that can go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about Pluto yeah. Nash? Because I heard that yeah. was also another shitty movie okay. of his. But like, I don't know if that's the name of it, but yes, it is another Eddie Murphy. Yeah. That's an, I'll, yeah, have, I'll look into it and I'll let you know. The thing you're describing, I've never heard that concept before. Pluto Nash was at his Leonard part six. Yeah, something like that, yeah. But um, good, and I'll say seventy two. Nice. Okay. Just just good to me, but I, I enjoyed it. Nice. I enjoyed it. I will definitely watch the other ones. You know, if they're around. The, yeah, the yeah. second one's okay. The third one, I don't remember being very good at all. It takes place at an amusement park, and like I remember really? him jumping from. Uh, what do you call the thing that goes overhead? The uh, uh, um, scare monorail sort of, sky, like sky, the sky line the monorail sky ride. Mon- but the, when you're in the when you're hanging cards, on a little car and he's jumping like from one to the other and I'm just like that, that, is he a superhero all of a sudden Gilbert no. steals the movie I, I don't remember he Gilbert being him in this and, uh, him and uh, Eddie Eddie or uh, Eddie tells him to ad lib and Gil went to uh, excellent did he <laughs> yeah. do his aristocrats bit or something like that <laughs> but uh, so we're looking at next week Andy uh, oh, uh, Pope of Grinch Village with my other son Daniel will finally be on the show I said Danny will be making oh he's never appearance. been on before he's been living in okay. this house since he graduated college for free for a yeah, year i said you free. finally yeah. have to come on the podcast he'll say it's not free he gives his mother 100 bucks every week but still <laughs> 100 bucks is not covering room and board in this yeah. place but um all right so we'll have danny on we haven't picked a day so we'll decide that after but after, uh, uh memorial weekend i'll tell everybody else to check us wait, out over there on wait, Spreaker. Wait, wait you got wait. something i do have one just oh, to close up? out our question the eddie murphy movie that we were just talking about is meet. called meet dave, dave. okay yeah meet never dave. Heard, dave. heard that meet yeah. dave yeah. early I never heard 2000s that i believe early mid 2000s I heard of dave yeah. with these Kevin little Klein, like but yeah. Yeah. Aliens, it was actually like, 2008 in his head and it's like a i'd kind of heard the concept in memory it's kind of like a slapstick ish comedy movie yeah so dana hates it right I don't remember enjoying the movie, but so I remember long. seeing it's it. So it was long. 2008. Which yeah, I did not remember. Like, it was like last week, but uh, yeah. it's almost like 20 years ago. But I ago also now. thought it was God. like in the 90s, so it's I don't 16 know. 16 years yeah. ago. Oh Come on now. God. Yeah. And that's all I got. Not 16 <laughs> years ago. Also, the Family Guy sound. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm so glad you knew what I was singing. As soon as you said <laughs> that, I was like, oh, that's what I, go I was timing that the whole movie. Every time it came on, I was like, oh my God. But I only know it because it's huge on TikTok. Yeah, it's and then like another. every TikTok. And then another. <laughs> That's when they go back in time to meet Lois and. Uh, yeah, they, and they, he's like, wow, 18 year old Lois. Oh, yeah. Holy, holy <laughs> crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think she ends up marrying Quagmire, but yeah. actually messes yep. up the future. Uh, that's what happens. But check us out over there on Spreaker. Download, rate, subscribe, review, do all those fun things. It's exciting. A new podcast on all of our socials. Um, the Jazoo on Instagram, Jazoo74 on X and Twitter. It's been an exciting a new podcast. I'm Jason. 
agonzo1 on Twitter, agonzo1970 Instagram. One blue dot is enough to get us through a whole podcast. Nice. I'm Andy. Dana Caps on TikTok, Dana Caps 77 on Instagram. I'm Dana. Variance Reviews on Instagram, and I'm Connor. Thanks for coming, Connor. Thank, Thank you, you again, Connor. Connor. Thanks, Connor. Look at our Halloween list and schedule something. I'll take a look. Yeah. You'll see me again, I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>